How are you all doing? You're looking pretty this morning. You're all looking pretty. Rob, you been plowing some of that light snow? Rob's been out there plowing the light snow. Hey, Rob, tell them to come do my road, will you? I'm going to take a shot. They didn't do our road either. Jefferson County. Oh, we love them. Oh, great. Yeah. You can get a number. Hallelujah. Hey, you know what? We're blessed, aren't we? Yeah. You guys okay? Yeah. I'm going to start out with just a little prayer. These guys are going to get started here. <coughs> you know, there's people coming in. We're having a big dinner afterwards. You all know about it? Yes. You all know about the big dinner? We're having a big dinner today. This is the uh, Irish potluck. Well, it's not a potluck. It's a fundraiser. You didn't bring any food. Mona has been cooking for three days. Oh, well, Courtney helped then. There's a few of these ladies helped her. But I want you to know something. This is a fundraiser. And you know what? If you've got money for it, that's good. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll just see. We don't care. Hey, man, it's all good. But uh, we're going to have uh, David and Monty up here in just a second. But uh, we're going to pray. We'll get started. Thank God for this day. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for our friends that came to minister to us. And I thank you, Father God, for their heart, their heart, Father God, to come and share their gifts with us. And Father God, what you've done in them, what you're doing in them, it's all about you, Lord, it's not about us. We're grateful today for your love. We're grateful today for your peace, Father God, that peace that passes all understanding. And that you are our provider, that you provide all of our need according to your riches and glory. And that is spirit, soul, and body. Father God, we've got everything that pertains to the life of godliness. We have it. It's right here. All we've got to do is open our eyes. And Father, that's what we pray today. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. Open the eyes of our understanding, your understanding. And Father God, we just bless your holy name today. We thank you for loving us when we didn't deserve anything. We thank you for the great exchange. Lord, you got, you got what we deserved, and we got what we deserved. And Father, we're just grateful today. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for life and life abundance. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 David and Monty, here we go. Give the Lord a great big shout of praise. Woo! Really? Really? Football people are out there like <laughs> that's, a, that's the best we can give it up for Jesus, our Lord, our Redeemer. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big shout of praise. Thanksgiving in my heart. Does anybody have anything to be thankful for this morning? I will enter his gates with Thanksgiving in my heart. I was, I'd set aside one hour to pray every morning back in the 80s, and I was working for Team Thrust for the Nations, and I'd go over to the communications building. There's a little room upstairs, and I'd go over there early, 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 and I'd pray. The first day over there, I, I, man, I prayed for all my family, all my loved ones, all my friends. And, and I prayed for the ministry there, the Team Trust of the Nations. And I just prayed for the leadership by name, named every one of them. I looked, it had been three minutes. I'm like, oh man, I wish I had told the Lord I'd pray for 10 minutes, you know. And it's so hard to do something in the natural, it's a spiritual thing. And anyway, long story short, three weeks of that, I think God was getting a little bore out with me in a good way. He loves us. But he said, son, I was struggling to pray for a whole hour. And, and, and I just heard the Holy Spirit say, son, why don't you just enter my gates with Thanksgiving and see what happens next. And you know what? An hour was enough. I needed so much more than an hour because I had so much to be thankful for. If you don't believe you have anything to be thankful for this morning, take a deep breath. You know... I, you don't have to raise your hand, but have you ever gotten a cut off notice on your gas or electric or something like that? I always hated that, you know, because they hung it on your front door, great little red thing. Now, I knew someone that got a cut off notice once. 
And, you know, everybody knew, man, their electric's about to go off. That's when you start stretching the extension cords to your neighbor's house. <laughs> and, but can you imagine if you've got a cut off notice on your oxygen? But you've got a great big notice that said it's come to heaven's attention that you have not paid your oxygen bill ever. And you owe us $364,954,237.29. That's due by midnight with your oxygen's going off. That's how thankful we should be to take a deep breath. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The breath of life that God brings. Man, we got so much to be thankful for. Look over at your neighbor, neighbor right now and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I look like I do. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 If you have a wife or husband here, look at them and say, Thank you, Lord. I didn't get stuck with what I could have got stuck with. <laughs> Come on. Now let me ask again, does anybody here got something to be thankful for? Amen. Glory to God. You know, I'm so ready. I, I feel like we're coming to a close of the season. And, and I will need more. Uh, I've got about 12 more services. And I'll probably need, and I'll back off a little bit if you'll turn me up a little. Because I've got to last for the next few days. And, and I'm a little hoarse, and don't you dare call me a big one. Oh, that's my best joke, so come on, you're going to be here. And, and so, man, we got so much to be thankful for. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. You know what? I got set free in that prayer room, giving thanks to God. An hour wasn't long enough. So you know what happened? It spilled over into the whole day. Just thankful. Oh, God, thank you for my family. God, thank you that things are as good as they are. There's been days like that. Instead of looking at all the bad, thank you that things are as good as they are. Amen? Amen. And what happened in that is I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I didn't have to enter his courts with praise. That thanksgiving put me on a conveyor belt that just brought me right on into adoration. And just adoring God, just loving God. And then you know what happened next? I came into that place where Jesus talked about God as a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I started saying that we're coming to a close of a season. Get ready. I'm so glad to be coming to the close of a season, coming into this fresh new season. Because I call this season we've been in in the church lethargic. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's true. Bless the Lord. He's been so good to me. Man, people make fun of the old timers. Oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Man, they walk in and say, well, the Lord's been good to me. Somebody over there go, Woo! Glory to God! Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks goofy, but don't look as bad as you. Well, the Lord's been good to me. Everybody give the Lord a shout of praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I almost got strength enough to make it to my next nap. Oh, We're coming to the close of lethargic Christianity. And people are going to have a shout. Psalms chapter 5 says, Let all those who put their trust in thee rejoice. Thank you, Lord. Let me try it over here. Hallelujah. Let all those who put their trust in thee rejoice. Woo! <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Amen. You gotta say something. I gotta say something because I'm on a roll, brother. I know you are. I'm gonna write you right in the middle of it because we're gonna do a declaration. Oh, come on, let's do it from the uh, a Passion Translation of Isaiah 43:19. It's a powerful word. You guys ready? Come on, yeah. stand yeah. up. I got to start up and do this you. with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, stand up and do this with me. It says, "Ready? Say it with me, okay?" Okay. I'm, I'm doing something brand new. Something unheard of, even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams in the desert. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you proclaim that? Did you declare that? That's for you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. David.
Get back on your rolls now, man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, you interrupted me and no things going on. Now. I've been around that too. You know, so I got up and went to the bathroom. Oh, you broke it. No, God's just not that weak. And I'm going to tell you, grace is not that weak. Amen. As you stomp your toe and holler cock a doo and your name disappears out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Are you kidding? Are you? Are, God, help us. Man, I want to tell you something. God loves you. You know, God had me thinking yesterday, just pondering, just deep on the prodigal son. Uh, now, whose son was he? The rich man. Remember the wealthy man? And, and he, he took what he thought was his portion. How many of you know that there's more to the portion? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's stuff held in reserve for God's people. Yeah. Amen. One of these days we're going to get enough sense to know we don't just get any portion and then that's gone and, and, and it's all over with. God has stuff in reserve for us yeah. that are faithful, that just keep on. Well, what's faithful mean? Be, being good? Are you kidding? I can't be good. No. I, I was good for two weeks once. Then I left my room. Seriously, I'm not bad, but I can't be good. I can't be good enough to deserve God's son dying on the cross for my sin. I can't be good enough to deserve heaven. And, and you know, so I was pondering, I was thinking about the prodigal son. And he was in the pig's pen, right? Eating with the pigs, wallowing with the pigs, covered with pig stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I told you it couldn't be good. No. But whose son was he? He's still the son, wasn't he? He's still the son. Once a son, always a son. Once a daughter, always a daughter. Off somewhere you shouldn't be, still a daughter. Come on, off doing something you shouldn't be doing, still a son. Amen. See, whatever I am, I'm his. And he loves me with the perfect love. You know why I can say that? Because I'm persuaded. Yeah. I'm not convinced by the devil that God don't love me. That's where he used to be. Because the devil, he wants to convince you that God doesn't love you because of the things you know about yourself. But that don't even matter. I, I'll think something stupid. I'll say something dumb. And, and, and the enemy will say, look at that. And I'll say, you can't touch this. There's no song in the world. I, I was a redneck boy. You, you probably didn't pick up on that. Uh, I was a long-haired redneck, but I've never been around nothing but the gospel jubilee and church music and a little bit of folk music in, in grade school. And uh, then uh, my dad didn't believe in television. Anybody ever meet anybody like that? He did not believe in television. I knew it was real. I saw it <laughs> down the street at my friend's house. But my, my mama was a Southern Baptist, a little Southern Baptist woman, loved God with all of her heart. But she's going to have a TV. My dad was a fire breathing Pentecostal holiness preacher, and I don't know how we got together, don't ask me. But I figured that made me a Nazarene. <laughs> That's where we'll be not the Nazarene church. But but my dad finally came around because my mama wanted a TV, so we had this great big old huge <laughs> box over in the corner. And when company would come over, dad would make her cover it with a sheet and put a vase of flowers or something on top, you know. <laughs> And put the rabbit ears down behind. Anybody know what rabbit, rabbit ears are in this century? And uh, and so we would go over to other people's house, and I noticed they had a great big box over in the corner, and a tablecloth or, or sheet or something. And some of them get fancy and put a doily. Anybody know what a doily is? <laughs> and put flowers on. And I was just I was just a little fat boy, but I, I was always so curious, and I. I go over and look, yeah, there's rabbit ears, right? I thought, does nobody else know but me? <laughs> that this is what they call the one-eyed devil? Yeah. Did you know church people drive around town looking at people's roofs to see if they had the devil's tail up on the roof, an antenna? Uh, I'm serious. I was in crowds like that. They'd drive around like, yeah, look at there. There's the devil's tail. <laughs> cool. <laughs> 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 and, and, but you know what, Dad? Started believing in television. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Mama Rooney. He started believing in television when Ford Wagon came on. 
You know, Porter Wagner wasn't all bad. He did songs like, let's see. A tongue can accuse and carry bad news. The seeds of distrust it will sow. So unless you make no mistakes in your life, be careful of the stones that you throw. How many of you know that's a message? Yeah. Unless you make no mistakes in your life, you better be careful of the stones you throw. The right. tongue can accuse care. So I've got, I didn't know it, but Dad started believing in television, and I started learning things that I didn't know I was learning. And had all kinds of Merle Haggard and George Jones and good wholesome songs like, you know, I feel tears welling up going deep inside like my heart's going to just break. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. You know we want to get with it. I, I mean, we'd be saying, if we kept on, we'd be singing, tonight the bottle let me down. And what did you expect anyway? Oh, man. I bought a ball for 20 bucks and it let me down. What'd you expect? <laughs> So much pride, man, taking that first drink. Twelfth drink, you're hugging a toilet in the bathroom, praying to it. Oh, God, help me. I ain't got no guitar yet, but I expect it to happen any minute. I'm going to talk until I get some guitar. You could do four more and a half a too. Yeah. And, and so, and then Dad loved the gospel, the, the gospel jubilee. On Sunday morning, best of good the man had a beehive, a real one, a thing. But you know, major, major, major gospel music, and uh, the the Happy Goodman. <coughs> Did you know how the Happy Goodmans got their name? It's happy. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> Sheriff got behind them one night. They was all piled pop in a like '54 Chevy truck, single cab. And all of them was piled in the front. They was all over the road. He thought it was somebody drunk. And he stopped them. When they opened the door, three of the Goodmans fell out on the ground. True story. Hello? And he said, oh, it's just them old happy Goodmans. They was coming from church, and they was laughing and cutting up. Hey, did you know it's okay to be happy and be a Christian at the same time? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Man, Demas Shakarian, uh, the founder of the Full Gospel Businessman, he wrote a book called that. God's people, the happiest people on earth. And man, I, I'm going to say it again. We're coming to a close of this lethargic crud that's got on the church, man. Get up off for our lazy assurance and shout. I'm going to say it again. Look, Psalm chapter 5. Let all those who put their trust in thee rejoice. See, the difference is I was on death row and knew it. We're, we are all on death row. And Jesus walked in and he said, I'm going to take their place and I'm going to die for them. And I want to tell you something. Someone told me two weeks after I got saved, 1981, in August. And they said, now listen, you're going to calm down just become a normal Christian after a while. And I said, thanks for the warning. <laughs> Come on. And I'm a happy Christian. I'm going to remain a happy Christian. I, I, I get stirred up. Praise God. I, the goodness of God. I look at my old wife. <laughs> Glory to God. Old wife. Yeah, my old wife. wife. Oh, I thought you said old wife. Yeah, I look at my wife. Uh oh. <laughs> I was just teasing you. <laughs> Amen. And, and we rejoice. You know, we have those minutes. Uh, we pull out of our driveway one day and We'd had a little fuss, and she said, just let me out, and I'll walk back to the house. And I said, well, roll when you hit the ground. It won't hurt as bad. Oh. Oh. We started laughing. It wasn't nothing. Yeah. But, but, you know, we started laughing. And that was it. You know, everybody has a little, little thing uh, once in a lifetime. And, you know, she got right later, and everything was fine. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, buddy. Amen. We're just going to enjoy the Lord. We're going to worship. We're just going to, you know what we're going to do when we start music? We're going to enter his gates with thanksgiving. I've got so much to be thankful for. Monty Gaylord, uh, he is, we're becoming old friends. We're going to be old friends one day. We're just new friends now. But he loves God. Man, he's got a gift and a talent that's amazing. But, but he's given it to the Lord. 
Amen. And and he's he's humble and he, he loves God, he loves people, and we just enjoy him. And we've had so much fun with him, and I'm gonna have him share a minute. But you know what? We're gonna just enter in with thanksgiving in our heart. I'm thankful to be in Mountain High today. You know, and people go on about what's it like to tour all over the world. You know, we go to England, we go to nursing homes and jails and prisons and you know, I mean, people just, they get the big eye and the big head, and they think, boy, they're just touring and all of them. Yeah, we're touring, same, same little granny homes, same little jails and prisons and, and churches and all kinds of things. I love the churches in, in Ireland, especially the, the pastor took me out after service, and he said, you don't drink at all? <laughs> we went to the pub. You know, they, over there, they go out to the pub and, and turn back some beer and say, man, God's been good to me, you know, and it freaks Americans out. You know, he said, you don't drink at all? And I said, no, I figured I drank enough before. God said, I don't need it. I said, it ain't bothering me, though. Come on. But but see, I got a drink of new wine. I got a fresh drink of something. I just don't need that anymore. Right. Amen? Yeah. And God, one word to pick on anybody else. God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world. Pause. So if God didn't send Jesus to condemn us, who was the only one righteous enough to condemn us, then who did he send? The devil? No. If God wanted to condemn us, he would have sent Jesus. He would have said, Son, I want you, you're the only one righteous enough. I want you to go down there and condemn them all. Come on. But no, he said he didn't send Jesus to condemn us, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. To save us. Amen. Amen. And thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Hallelujah. So, darling. Isn't that good? And I was just thinking about. Uh, and then we can't condemn ourselves because, you know, sometimes we condemn ourselves and then that condemnation that we do put on ourselves sometimes goes right over to our neighbor. Oh, you didn't do this or you didn't do that. You should have scraped your, your step off, you know, all the snow. But anyway, you know, I... <laughs> wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's fresh. That's brand new. I mean, what, what, was, what was on the foot that had to be scraped off? You ever stepped in it? <laughs> Why do you think he wants to wash our feet? Amen. Uh -huh. I, was, I was with David Wilkerson at Nine Square Church in New York City, and he stepped up the, the edge of the stage, just very quiet, humble man, he, and waited, and the worship saw he's up there, so they quiet down, and he said, I feel like Jesus said, I want to wash your feet. He said, if you've ever been in New York City, you can understand this. He said, we walk through this world, and our feet become so dirty, and I wouldn't even want to go into a description of experience in New York City. He said, but I want us all to raise our hands and say, Lord, wash my feet. And my first thought was just like Peter. I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. That just didn't seem right here. Then I remembered Peter. And the Lord said, if I don't, he said, then you have no part of me. Man, I threw my hands up and I said, Lord, wash my feet. So Amen. scrape them off, whatever else. <laughs> Amen. 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 So we're, we're children of God, sons and daughters of God, and that's our identity. And so when we mess up, it's okay. He's the perfect one, you know. And he lives in us, so the only place we're perfect is in him. But the scripture that's been standing out to me lately, and this is why I kind of teased David when he said, I thought he said, my older wife, you know, my old wife. And so I, got, I kind of was teasing him up here. But um, the scripture that has been standing out to me lately is, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. But we can't forget what it says before that. It says, likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Ye all, or yea, all be, well, well King James <laughs> <really good show. laughs> We got to work on reading this King James out loud. <laughs> Try to get... Likewise, ye, ye, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. All of ye be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud. And give it grace to the humble. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And we've been talking about leading and following quite a bit. I have a back, back, uh, dance background. And um, love following dance, you know. The reason God put her with me. And you just <laughs> see me dancing. ballroom dancing? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I got it down. I've already learned so much from her. It's like... Five, six, seven, eight. Step, 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 step. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm learning. Look at me. I'll be breakdancing before you know it. Oh, God. Man, we got married, and I thought, God, are you sure? I was looking at her. And one day, she, she just decided to stretch, and she pulled her leg up and touched the ceiling with her toe, and I thought, my God, Jesus. <laughs> Elizabeth, I'm coming home, <laughs> you know? But God, God loves us so much. She said, well, she said, God said, I'm going to get more mature. She actually said, older. And, and then God said that I'm going to get younger. So I thought, man, that's a word in new season. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just walking together and walking and rejoicing together and uh, getting up and praying together. Man, men uh, and wives uh, love one another, pray for one another, strengthen one another, speak life to one another, death and life are in the power of the tongue. She'll look over at me uh, and, and say, oh, honey, you're so handsome. <coughs> See? Yeah. And I'm like, Ed Shirley, Clifton Coulter, whoever, don't you dare pray for my wife's eyes. You leave her alone. Amen. <laughs> but here's what I believe about that. Is in Ecclesiastes 3, the Word of God says he makes all things beautiful in his time. So my turn's coming. Oh. Amen. <laughs> our elders and we, we took care of our elders but we didn't just take care of them we listened to them to get things from them and so you know even if you're a little kid there's somebody you're older than you know and, and so we just have to teach that to each other and, and draw on that because we have somebody that's looking up to us and that's going to follow our example and that's, that's what goes on my heart the music was just bursting out of us. I wasn't trying to drown you out. Amen. All right. All right, now, before she leaves, I want everybody to look over at someone and give them a great big smile offering. All right, look up here and give us a smile offering. It's the only kind we're going to take up. Now, look up at the Lord and give him a smile <laughs> offering and a wave offering. Amen. 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 Here we go. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me. If I can have some more microphone there. Right. Can I have a little more microphone? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me. We'll sing it now. Well, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad.
But I want you to look over and someone see what glad looks like. Amen. Here we go. Yeah. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice in him. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice in him. Scripture anyway, I think there's several, but but I've only found one thing in Scripture that says blesses God. It's a simple little thing. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless ye the Lord. I thought God this blesses you. Come on. So I figure two kinds of people will, will, will be, and it's, it, it says you know it blesses the Lord. Two kinds of be. And the other thing it says, lifting uh, the medical people released a report that raising your hand straight up in the air is good for your heart. Yeah. That's the doctors. So I figured two kinds of people would be healthy in their heart, robbery victims. <laughs> and people that do what Psalms 134 says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless ye the Lord. Wow. Lord, this place is you here have some. I'm willing to run all over the world. Bounce off every edge of this earth, man, to do something to bless God. And he says, I just want you to raise, raise your hands and give me a wave. Amen? Amen. And, I, and I've heard the Lord, I, I told somebody the other night, I, I, when you're learning to preach and you're learning to get in front of people and stuff, you sometimes feel so awkward. And, and one of the most awkward times of my life was in a church that was real, you could feel just a <coughs> uh, critical spirit and condemning and and even some words that were spoken, you know. And so I preached the best I could preach. I sang the best I could sing. But I felt like I had, had just really failed in getting the point across and felt like it just wasn't the best. But as I walked out of the church, I heard the Lord say, Son, I really enjoyed that message. Aww. Can you imagine? And who cares what anybody else thinks? He said, I really enjoyed the service Amen. tonight. And he blessed me, and he loved me, and he said, that was good. He didn't say, I've never thought of that. <laughs> I mean, he didn't do what I like said, oh, myself. Come on. <laughs> Slow crap. Uh, <laughs> but, but man, God, God likes to be blessed, and, and he loves us so much. He wants to spend time with us. That's what he wants. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. The mention of His name. Oh, it heals me inside. Oh, how I love him. There is a Oh. 
Steve Mappagate over in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So we went and did the funeral and then they, he knew so many people, so many places that they did a memorial in Decatur, Illinois. So I went and did the memorial, ministered there and did music and, and ministered for that. Then they uh, went to Tulsa, Broken Arrow, and did another memorial. So it was about a three month deal. And I told my wife, I said, listen, I said, when I die, bury me. Don't take me on the road. I've been on the road all of my life. Lord, out of <laughs> But I've written this song because I've been doing a whole bunch of funerals uh, where I was at for this season. And uh, I didn't like that. They sang happy songs. Real sad. And I understand losing somebody and how heartbreaking and all that. But we need, we need, we need to right now on this side adjust some things. And Paul said, we do not sorrow as those that have no hope. That's right. Now, did he say we do not sorrow? No. But he said, we don't sorrow as those that have no hope. You know, I, I do sometimes leaving Mountain High, and, and I say it right here because this is where I'm at, but there are a hundred other places I can say, I sorrow and leave. Yeah. Used to be because Pastor Ed took me out and bought me a steak. <laughs> we had to bring our own chicken noodle soup this time. <laughs> and we're still glad. Amen. We're still glad. And the no joke, really of course, but we do it. <laughs> I laugh more with this pastor than any, any pastor minister. Yeah. And I don't know why, because we don't say nothing really funny. Yeah. I think we just look at each other. <laughs> look at that. No. No, I love I love you, pastors. And, uh, and so there's sorrow in that. And, and you know, we got a, a message about a friend that we heard that he was in the hospital. It turned out he wasn't. But my immediate thought is, God, watch over my friend. Yes. You know, why? Because I don't see him again on this side. Yes. But we don't sorrow as those that have no hope. Because just a little, little while, just a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Mm -hmm. Just a little while, one of us will draw our last breath and take our first one in heaven. Yeah. 
Amen. Just a little while, and so it's going to happen. You know, but I want to tell you some things I've learned. If you'll eat kale, <laughs> if you will eat really good organic vegetables, if you will take CoQ10 and mend your saw palmetto, if you will take a really good, what's the bio? Uh, I don't know. That stuff you made me take. If you will, if you will drink green milk. Wait a minute, I'm talking to you. Probiotic. Fish oil. If you will, fish oil. Yeah. Oh, man, don't forget the fish oil. And, and even if it does have mercury in it. And if you will drink green magma. Don't get the stuff that tastes really bad. Get the stuff that tastes really, really bad. The worse it tastes, but but if you'll do that, that and exercise at least an hour in the morning, walk five miles and exercise in the evening, <laughs> you still won't die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you gonna die. You know, people uh, through the years, I've, I've had a few experiences of people come to the altar and <laughs> the doctor says, I'm going to die. And I'm like, you're 59. No one ever told you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're one of those, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be blue and doom. You can die. <laughs> oh, man, I was feeling good about all that inner gate stuff. But now, <laughs> you know, and, and so get over it. Best thing to do, someone brought a girl to me, because I'm not a counselor, but they brought their daughter to me, said, she's talking about suicide. I said, okay. And then, Would you talk to her? I said, sure. I said, I want y'all to stay. I said, so you've been thinking about suicide? And she said, about, and I said, about killing yourself? She said, yeah. I said, well, go ahead and get it over with. <laughs> the parents were like, Ooh. yeah, well, you brought her to me. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's kind of like today. You knew it was going to be weird when we walked up here. <laughs> Monty's going to share it here and be like, oh, thank God for Monty. And, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Paul said in Galatians 2 and 20, I am crucified with Christ. Yeah. Well, man, he's having a good day, wasn't he? Yeah. What does that sound like? Finality. It's over, man. I have crucified myself. You know? I am crucified with Christ. Yes. I noticed in another verse he said, I, I die daily. <laughs> wonder what kind of day he's having that day. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. See, I didn't even have none of that. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we don't have to, we don't have to fear death. We don't have to wrestle with it. We don't have to just, you know, some people start dying in their 20s. Just wears you out. You know, I got blue dot F and Z. Oh my God, it's not blue dot. I started that disease. <laughs> and we're raising money to find it. Well, first we're going to find out what it is. We're doing research, then we're going to raise money to find a cure. Yeah, yeah. that's my own very own blue dot F and Z. Yeah. Spelled just like it sounds. <laughs> Come on now. Some people just always die. The, God, the doctor told me he's in 97. He, he, he had a great big old heart disease, man. He, he used the whole alphabet. And I couldn't pronounce it. I told him, I said, I don't receive anything I can't pronounce. He said, if I can pronounce it, I'm going to renounce it. And he got mad at me. He said, you're not taking this serious enough. You're going to die in this when you are too. <laughs> that shocked him. Yeah. <laughs> But see, I already knew I was going to die someday. But, but I said, Doc, I said, God's not into dying. He's into living. Amen. Amen. And I said, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and live until I do die. Amen. I'm not real smart. But why go home and wait? <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what they want you to do because they <laughs> said you're going to die. Okay. Hey, I've been around a little bit. I, my good friend Larry Johnson, they told him you got three, two days. Uh-huh. Two days to live. Remember Larry? Yeah. I was on my way to the hospital and the Lord reminded me of Hezekiah. And I got there, all the family was gathered, and they just got Larry up on the edge of the bed and had the most horrible, sad look on his face. You know? And people think that's normal. The doctor says you're going to die in two days. Yeah. Of course you're going to be sad. Why? 
You got two days left and you want to be sad? Hello. I've been sad a few times in my life. Jack Daniels didn't help. Jose Cuervo didn't either. I.W. Harper, Jim Beam, all that stuff. But why would I want to spend, if I got two days left, why would I want to spend it blue and miserable too? And I walked in, and, I said, and he looked up at me so sad. He said, hey, Dave. I said, hey, Larry. All, all his family sitting around. I said, Larry, I said, I heard they told you you had two days to live. He said, yeah. That's what they said. I said, well, I'm here to tell you you can live three days. <laughs> Well, ain't that better, too? <laughs> I know, I see how you do that. And I said, I bet you if me and you pull together, we can keep you alive for four days. You think I'm crazy, I am. But four is better, too. That's double portion. And I said, I, I believe that, that you and me believe so much in Jesus that we can keep you alive a whole month. And you could enjoy the month too. You don't have to be blue and miserable too and hurt. And I said, no telling. I said, God, and then I told him about Hezekiah 15 years. And man, he, he started laughing. His family was mad at me. <laughs> How dare you give him hope? <laughs> boy, they, boy you, I mean, what's the right thing? Well, we're going to start punting him and say, why wait two days? Go on home. You know? <laughs> You know what? He lived 90 some days. You know what he did with that 90 days? He laid hands on his four sons. He pulled them together and said, I want to share some things with you, Dad. Learn. I didn't know early because I didn't know Jesus. Come on. I know what the greatest dad. I was a good dad, but I wasn't the greatest. He said, I was rough. And he said, but I want to tell you it's because I love you. And I love you now. And I want you to have the Father's blessing. And he laid hands on his four sons, on his grandchildren. He had 90 days of heaven on earth. Come on. And then he went home with a shout. Come on. So, you know, Doc, if you don't mind, I'll just go ahead and live until I do die. Amen. I don't, you know what? I don't have to make an appointment. Oh, gosh, I've got to die at 2.30, man. I mean, I don't have to get a ride. Can someone take me for a ride to death? You know, I, I don't have to catch a bus. See, but the devil wants us to think about those little things, but what's this? Philippians 4 to 8. What sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are of a good report? If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Yeah? And, and the enemy wants to pull all your thoughts over into failure into death, into sickness. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know what? I think I'm healed. Amen. I think it. I believe it, but I think it. I don't imagine myself. I want some. I'll imagine myself laying in the coffin and giving a little funny grin. I bought a coffin. Someone said, why'd you buy that coffin? I said, I've got a good deal on it because it's used. <laughs> yeah, y'all are my ball bearers. Yeah, were y'all the Paul Bears? I had, I had these guys that are men's advance bring the coffin in. And we had a funeral. <laughs> Amen. And rejoice. So, so it's all backwards. It's all messed up. It's right side up. And you're thinking, man, this guy, man, how much longer? But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you will live through this service with Brother David and Monty Gaylord and live to tell someone else about it. I was in the weirdest service this morning. <laughs> you know, but, but something touched me because. I want to tell you something. We're not supposed to be full of fear. Fear has torment. Yeah, right. And I know just the, just the kind that we have, that there's someone here being tormented with fear. But listen to this. Perfect love casteth out all fear. And fear has no more power over you and me. Fear has no more grip on me. Amen? Fear not. Faith answered. No one was there. Hello? You need that down in your spirit. Fear not. Oh, you're going to fail. Your company's going under. You're, you're going to get laid off. They, all that. Praise God. Praise God. Who won't sell themselves to that job anyway the rest of their life? Man, if you ever get fired, 
shake their hand, hug their neck, say, God bless you. Thank you. Thank They'll hire you back in 10 minutes. Double your pay, give you better benefits. Because they want to figure you out, amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to do my funeral song. I'm writing a whole funeral album. And uh, I'll give you a little taste of one. It goes, uh, When I die, you can put me in a box, bury my bones wherever you please. You can cry alone, but it ain't going to bother me. Because I'll be a long time gone. To a bright and happy home Woo. Celebrating and singing and dancing around My heavenly Father's throne Amen? Amen. So you can cry and moan and all that If I go before Ed, he's preaching my funeral And he's saying, hey, he wouldn't want that Stop, stop <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Laugh or leave <laughs> <laughs> Amen And so this is my funeral song But Steve kind of took it and he died because I've been singing it to his study. And, uh, There's a celebration going on in heaven, rejoicing all around God's throne. Our brothers overcome this old world and all its strife. His name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. He wouldn't come back to this world for all the wealth it holds. And he'd tell each one of us if he could. Don't you weep and mourn for me. And don't hurt because I'm gone. Break out your dancing shoes. Party's on.
high. How do you like that thing? You guys are awesome. Thank you guys. Man, that, if that don't light your fire, your wood is wet. Hey, Amen. Hey, uh, we're going to do a few things here. Uh, I'm doing the announcement because Mona already took the kids down. They couldn't wait. <laughs> okay. We're going to run after this. We're going to have our Irish dinner right after this. Are you coming? Yes. Everybody coming? Wait yeah. Come on. Yeah. Wait a minute. You guys coming? Absolutely. You coming? Irish food? Absolutely. Look at that. David wore green and so did I. You see it? Mark Emerson's colorblind and he told me I had green on. So I believed him. But I do. Watch. <laughs> Okay, Irish dinner, it's gonna be awesome. Price is 10 bucks. This is a, for adults, for kids it's 90. No, oh. uh, for adults. And all the money goes for the Kenya Orphanage. Amen. All right, and uh, these kids are awesome. And guys, we got kids in school. All this money is gonna go to help with their school, to help with their college. We got four of them in college. Orphans in Africa don't go to college. Unless they go to our orphanage. Yep, right. They're going. Amen. These kids are learning about Jesus. They go, uh, some of them are going to uh, Bill Kalel's uh, Bible school there. Uh, I mean, awesome stuff going on. Incredible. Then on uh, Resurrection Morning, Amen, Easter, uh, April 21st at 8 a.m., we're going to have our Resurrection Breakfast. Amen? Amen. Mona well, usually does this, so I'm trying to act like her. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got this one. The flowers. They, uh, Mona drew this herself. I didn't do it. And I, there's no partiality here, but Mindy, you get the flowers. <laughs> next, next week, right after church, we're going to have a special vision meeting. Vision, amen, for everybody. This will be short informational meeting with goals, vision, and a financial report. And the needs for 2019 come and be a part of it. Amen. Tomorrow, ladies' Bible study. Amen. Right here, 10 a.m. Yep. It'll be awesome, right? It is. It'll awesome. be good. You guys come. Ladies, come. All right. And then I'll flip the page. And then save the date. We got the date. Uh, talk to Rosa Rivera this week. We're going to have our annual pig roast on Saturday, July 27th. It's all right here. Saturday, July 27th, it'll be happening. The pig girls, can you come in there? You nope. gonna be in the pig girls? <laughs> come on, eat pork. Oh, I know that. I, I gotta say, you're kosher. <laughs> you got <a> chicken. <laughs> he, eats, he eats dead chicken, though. Um, oh, oh, yeah, Kenya News, you can see that in here. There's still $3,900 out for the kids. Um, bills to the uh, schools and that you know what that's nothing hey man i think we've already sent them over nine thousand i think over nine i think i said seven last week but it was eight now we sent them another thousand this week so come on let's get that paid for amen and we are blessed amen you guys okay you guys all right we're gonna have a good time today and we're gonna have a thanks for holding that up here hold that up higher that right there is our men's conference, the second, third, and fourth of May, May down at David's uh, place. This Great town, huge. the town of Refuge. It's an awesome town. You know, I, I don't know if I ever told you, but before that was a street. Yeah. I was walking across what is now the main street, and the wind was blowing, and I heard it audibly, but it was a whisper. I heard God say, Refuge, just wow. like that in the wind. Wow. And so from then on, we were building persimmon springs down the road, you know, we bulldozed and everything. Yeah. And from that day on, we began to call it refuge. And I saw the town, I saw it in the spirit, and then uh, both Christy and I both knew the constant bill right there. So she got up one morning, though, and looked out the window, and she said, honey, we have to move. I said, why? She said, I don't want to live in town. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're going to receive our offerings, our tithes and offerings for Mountain High right now, okay? Mm -hmm. And 
I'm not going to preach about it. I'm just going to uh, receive it. And uh, we'll do that. And then at the end, that Monty, will you help? He always forgets. You've got to give me a little time just to receive it. Are y'all usually done at like 11? Well, just to receive the offering for you to. Yeah, well, you can go a little older than that, right? Just 11 you're, 10. You're special. <laughs> I'm special Ed, you're special David. <laughs> so, amen. So, we got even overtime. Is it going to take overtime all day? Everything will be out there at 11 today, all right? I know we're always right on time, right? Yeah, sure we are. But, uh, I'll tell you what, man. My old friend David and my new friend Marnie got to spend a little time with them here last month down at the refuge. And uh, I tell you what, I heard something there. And uh, Dale and last year were down there. Of course, Christy was there. And we had a. <coughs> were you there? You guys were Dale Beer and uh, Sam and Beer were there. The Smittle Coffers. The Smittle Coffers. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I, I, I told Monty this this morning, but their instruments, hear this, this is powerful, their instruments minister to our hearts there. That's right. And uh, when these guys come up with something, I mean, it's, you know what? God invented music. Yes. Amen. And he, had, he did that so that he can minister to our hearts. And I'm telling you what, when you hear these voices, of course, but these instruments come alive. And it's the power of the Spirit of the living God. And I'm telling you what, there was a change in me. I know that's a song David said was going to hear, but, but there really was. And I mean, it was over the top. I mean, it was those instruments, those <coughs> voices that ministered to us. So they didn't just come here. I want you to know something. They didn't just come here today to entertain us. Amen? They didn't come here for entertainment. Although we will be entertained. But, but that's not the reason. The reason <coughs> is, is to let God prophesy from those instruments into our hearts. That's how it works. I'm telling you that's real. That's right. If you'll open your heart, if you'll open your heart, just say, Lord, say this with me. Say, Lord, Lord my heart is open. Minister to me. Minister to me. In Jesus' name. That's so simple. I can get it. And so I want you guys, I want you guys to just hear this. Hear it with your heart. Amen. Have fun. Have a good time. We always do here. My, my, my new friend Monty and my old friend David. Amen. We love you guys. I mean, they touch our hearts, a part of our family. And uh, have at it. Thank Amen. You, Amen. You know, uh, and, I, and I know I, I trust my friends with my friends. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's some people I wouldn't trust with my friends because they'd hurt them. And in the church, if you've ever met a mean Christian, you know what I'm talking about. They're just they're just half baked. Just wait till they're done; they'll be all right. Don't pick on them. Don't criticize them. But I trust this church, and it's none of my business. You can think, but it is too. But I trust this church this with Monty. Prayer requests. And Monty will be back. And Monty's so full of work; he'll be back here without me time and time again through. He's always welcome here. Through the years, he'll be here. And, uh, That's right. you know, I'm encouraging the body of Christ to treat uh, worshipers, treat musicians and ministers that minister through music to treat them good. You know, feed them. I mean, you know what I mean? Love them. Make them feel like they just came home for Thanksgiving dinner with their family. Chicken and soup. But the love of God that's here. And don't take for granted what you have here. Please don't make that mistake. It's not everywhere you go. Come on. And we travel all the time the world over. And what you have here at Mountain High is unique and it's different. And the love of God is real here. And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And I'm always loved when I come here. If you don't like me, I don't know what I'm dumb enough. That, and I, you know. <laughs> You, you, at least you pretend. You know. <laughs> this old, old country song, you know, country music can really be rough and rock and roll and everything else too, sad and mournful and blue. And this old song said, I lost my saddle in Houston. Anybody heard it? I broke my leg in Santa Fe. I lost my wife and a girlfriend somewhere along the way. 
I mean, you know, things aren't going good. <laughs> and then I love this, you know, I ain't got a dime, but what I got is mine. Yeah. I'm not rich, but man, I'm free. Yeah. No, you're stupid. <laughs> you just broke your leg, you lost your saddle, lost your wife and a girlfriend, there might be something wrong with that. You ain't got a dime, but you're free. Huh? We'll see you in your shoplifting baloney. <laughs> How sad. <laughs> okay? So I, those songs have such beautiful melodies that I, I really, I can't get them out of my mind. That's where, if you've heard any of my Amazing Graces, yeah. uh, I've got about 95 to 100 now. <clears throat> and uh, we're not going to do them all. <laughs> but but uh, I love this. I love the melody of it. And I love uh, Monty's fiddle on it. And I feel the anointing of God when we do this. So uh, we're going to do a couple of them. One, two, three, four. So I drifted away, Monty. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So we'll start back at the, at the heel leg part somewhere up there. Just, just play that slick. I want a saddle in Houston. God heal my leg in San Fe. Honey, what's the next line? <laughs> Oh yeah, I miss my wife. Thank you, Lord. I didn't you know, I'm gonna forget that other line. Let's do that again. All right, take three. I want a saddle in Houston. God in my name in Santa Fe. I miss my wife and my family. Whenever I'm away But when that sun is high In the Texas sky I'll be preaching at the county fair And a river by morning Jesus Christ and I'll be there
But you know what? It, uh, I wrote a song once. It, it just said, uh, every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, and every month, if I'd only known the love of God, known the grace of God, I would have served Him every day of my life. But I'm not going to live in sorrow for the days that have gone by. I'm just going to serve you, Lord, for the rest of my life. Man, once you know how awesome it is to live for God mm -hmm. and how awesome it is that He loves us and lives for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love, always love this song. And I, I may mess it up too, but I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> and uh, you want to do the guitar on this song? Uh, oh, this is, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I would get these songs in my mind when I was down the road or if I was roofing or renovating. All these old songs would come back to me. And I'd find myself a verse singing or, or thinking about it. And I thought, man, I don't want to think that, you know. Cast that old thought down. So finally I just had to start changing them all into amazing grace. And then my kids traveled with me everywhere. They heard the same testimony only every time I shared it. Uh, sometimes they'd hear the same message. The old preacher said, I never, I never preach the same message twice. And I'm like, you must not have a very good message. <laughs> And I'll wear it out. God gives me a message. I'll wear it out. And I'll, I'll preach it a thousand times in a row. You know, we get something fresh and new every time. Another thing the old timers would say is, I never preach another man's message. Shoot, you're stupid, man. I, I, I mean, plagiarism is my thing. <laughs> and besides that, who do they think Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is? Yeah. Paul. <laughs> so, shoot, yeah. Uh, I, I just heard Andrew Wong preach, and I thought, man, I'll perfect that, and it'll be real good. <laughs> it's all right. Andrew preaches me all the time. I'll preach him all the time. Man. But uh, he does a better job, maybe. But I do my part. Praise God. But I always love these songs, and I just hate to leave them out in the world like Puff and Magic Dragon. Yeah. You know, I thought, I just don't want to leave that out there. So I would just be sitting, begin to sing Amazing Grace to it. I, I always loved country roads. I was in a cell. I was 13 years old. And I was locked in a mental hospital in a, in a little cement hole. Because they turned it into a boys' home. They take all your clothes away and push you in this little cement hole. Solitary confinement. And I'll never forget, I laid in there one day. And there's a radio on way down the hall. This is back in the early 70s. And I heard Country Roads for the first time in my life. So regardless of who likes or doesn't like it, I heard that. My heart was already beginning to harden, and I, I didn't like to cry. And my mother had only been dead for about a year. Now here I am in solitary confinement in this old institution, and I hear Country Roads take me home. Uh -huh. And so one day that, that song came up in my mind, I just began to sing Blessed Lord, take me home to the place I belong. There with Jesus, take me home. Blessed Lord. Amen. That works. The same way with, with Puff, you know, and all those. And so we have those. We have the CD that we recorded when Pastor Ed came down. He don't, you mind me calling you Pastor? It's better than, no, Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Dale, and, and, because it was our very first attempt at a live recording. And a lot of things technology-wise didn't go right. We had a storm that night to boot. But it was awesome. And the presence of God was so real. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing like I had imagined or wanted. But you know what? You just you step out and you do things by faith. And the next one will be different. It won't be better because this the presence of God was all over this product. And and so that new CD's back there. It has three CDs in it. And it's just simply called Amazing Grace. It has 27 versions of Amazing Grace. Sweet Home Alabama, uh, Amarillo by morning. Uh, went to a garden party, except we, we really did, uh, went to a front, went, went to a backyard barbecue. Reminisce with my old friends, all that. So there's a lot of great. And then the songs that we did in the concert, and uh, and it's an awesome, awesome CD. Then we have three short messages of foundation grace. And I'll tell you, grace sets you free to live. It, it sets you free. When you get a glimpse of grace, you'll never again. The devil will never be able to convince you God doesn't love you. And here's why: because God persuades you that He does. 
And once you're persuaded, no one can talk you out of it. Anyway, we're gonna try to do mama try. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost in fact, was blind, but now I see. I taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear when I believed. Through many dangers, tolls, and stairs, I have already come. Grace brought the safest far, grace will lead me home. We've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, no less days to praise when we first begun. And I turned 21 in ministry, preach God's holy word, and no one can turn me back, but the devil tried, devil tried, devil tried to deceive me, but the devil was denied, no one can change my mind, but the devil tried. thing I remember no was a warm fire glow and mama with her Bible in her hand teaching us amazing grace how to pray and see God's face and how to trust the Lord made the stand my precious daddy heard the call to preach the gospel to all who would sit and listen to the word of God Stay faithful to the way, the truth and the life. Pass that man alone to me before he died. And I turned 21 in ministry, preach God's holy word. No one turned me back, but the devil tried, devil tried, devil tried to deceive me, but the devil was denied. No one changed my mind, but the devil tried. No one can turn me back, but the devil tried, the devil tried, the devil tried to see me, but the devil was denied. No one can turn me back, but the devil tried, oh, no one can change my mind. And you know, God will give you a gift if you don't ever develop it. It's just going to lay there. And some people certainly develop quicker and better. And uh, But I have people come up to me all the time and say, oh man, I always wanted to play the guitar. And I always say, what kind do you have? Yeah. yeah. And they look at me, oh, well, I don't have one. I said, you really want to play, don't you? <laughs> and uh, but I, I just love the gift of God and money. And, and that's not just the instruments and the music, but it's the heart that he has for God and has always had. I can see it. It's in a few stories and that he really loves God, knows that God loves him. And God brought him through stuff like he has all of us that ends up persuading us. The man that God loves us that much. Amen. Can I borrow your guitar? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. They took me to the factory. <laughs> Great honor to be here, David. Man, uh, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, we went to the men's retreat over there 
and Andrew Womack's and their Wom Womack, however you say his last name anyway, it was just incredible. It started a lot of things up in me that's been there for a lot of years and a lot of things that I didn't even know. I want to do y'all a song that a friend of mine, uh, Tommy Walker, wrote. stuff to go into, but 
I'll just tell you, like, I, I lost all of my feelings. Spock had nothing on me. I mean, I couldn't function because I couldn't feel anything. You know, God created a thing in our brain that lets us be able to even sense the Holy Spirit by feelings, you know. When people tell you there's love isn't a feeling, well, they haven't ever been without feelings. I mean, you wouldn't know when the Holy Spirit's talking to you if God hadn't created this thing in your brain that you could sense. Does that make sense? Because we live in a body. Well, our spirit definitely is a spirit too, you know. We're what, spirit, soul, and body. But the thing is, without this, you can't feel it and you can't operate right in this body here. And so I was a mess. And the devil lied to me and said, well, you lost your salvation. And because, I mean, if you can't feel anything, I couldn't feel love, joy, peace, any of the fruits of the Spirit were gone. And so I was just a mess. The only thing I could feel was fear, paranoia, schizophrenia. I mean, all the fruits of the devil. Does that make sense? And the church, bless their heart, they didn't know what to do with me. They ran. He's got evil spirits. Stay away. Because they might jump off on you. Well, it was an injury, you know. But they just, the church was ignorant in some fact, you know, things. That is, and ignorance is just lacking knowledge, you know. It's not calling them stupid. But anyway, we need to grow and learn that it gave me so much compassion to people that had brain injuries. Yeah. Because, you know, you'd see them and you just almost, if you don't think about it, when you see some guy sitting there rocking, you know, ah, and I'm not making fun of him because I did this, you know, and I paced. I see people doing it now, and I have compassion. It's like, oh, Lord, there's somebody in there. You know, before, it's almost like there's just, you know, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I just stay away from it, you know, because you don't know what to say to them, you know. And I, I just feel uncomfortable around people like that. But I walk up to them anymore. If I see a brother rocking, like I tell them, I know you're in there. And I went through this, and I'm out. You know, God is real. You know what I mean? Nothing is impossible with him. Just like that song says, nothing is impossible with our father. And I don't care. I mean, they told me, they told my wife at the time, which I ended up losing out of the deal, you know? But you know what? Just like Andrew said the other day, and I hate to quote somebody because like he even said, I'm not saying marriage isn't important, but God is the most important thing in our lives. Right. You know, just because you lose a marriage, it, it doesn't mean that life doesn't go on. You know, my kids aren't speaking to me right now. You know what? I choose to go with God. Mm -hmm. And I'm not nobody. I'm telling you, I'm nothing. I couldn't even do this without God. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my brother asked me, how do you do that? Because he, he ended up with a divorce and his kids won't talk to him. It drives him nuts. You know, he just can't deal with it. Yeah. But I told him, I said, you have to put it in God, you know, and roll it over yeah. to God. And God will make you be able to go on. You know what I mean? And so I'm telling y'all, it, it, it's like God has told me just to kind of spread the word that there is nothing that you are, are going through. Nothing. I don't care what has happened. I mean, he, there's nothing you're going through that he can't be your comforter. And he cannot help you walk right through it. And, and, you know, when the devil sitting there going, no, you've lost it. You've lost your wife. Your kids won't speak to you. you got two grandbabies you've never seen. You know, I mean, hey, you know what? But I've got God. Yeah. I've got God. I mean, what else do I really need? I mean, when it comes down to it, he's my all. Yeah. And, and I think if we get him to be our all, you know, then... He, he said, what, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to you. I mean, I know that's a little bit of a, uh, just a short version of what it said. I don't know it for word exact. But, you know, you seek first him, everything else, all the joy, all the yes. wonderful things will be added to you. I mean, it's just, that's what the word says, and he's not a man that he should lie. You know, but anyway, I just wanted to do some stuff. You know, uh, one thing is God showed me a long time ago that these instruments, just like your uh, pastor was telling you, they are, uh, they are voices. Yeah. See, I believe they are the musical heavenly language. Uh, 
it, music to me is just another language, is all it is. It's not, I mean, it's just language. That's all it is. And I have actually played and had my, in the spirit, just like you would speak in tongues, and I've had it interpreted from what I play. Yeah. I mean, it was just really cool, you know what I mean? And, 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 and so this church, this is a spirit-filled church. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying I couldn't tell. <laughs> but hey, would you all be into like, I just want to do something if that's okay. It's kind of like going out there, but I ain't really done much of this, but you know, I figure I've always been plow right in, you know. Um, <laughs> You might have we all just pray in the Spirit. And we just will enter in with you while you're praying in the Spirit. And Dave, if you feel like you want to enter in in whatever with a guitar too, man, this is like God's, this is God's show. You understand? God shows himself. This isn't any kind of entertainment. This is like just God. And so just enter in and, and pray in the Spirit. And I would pray in the Spirit with my mouth, but I can't walk in play field at the same time. <laughs> so, anyway, <coughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. We just praise you, Father God. You all pray loud when I play. You don't quit and back off because I'm playing. I want to do a couple of things here. I feel like no matter what we do, God's anointing is going to be on it. You know what I mean? And when Brother Dave was, you know, he's showing you some things in the world that, you know, I, I think God, really all those notes that were ever played really were intended for the praise and worship of God. You know what I mean? And I think it was Bach that said that, that all music was intended for the praise and worship of God. Of course, the devil got his hands on it. He's going to try to utilize it. And it's a powerful tool for him, for what he does, you know, because there's an anointing on music. But, you know, you can take a song like Charlie Daniels done. And I think God is into us having fun. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I mean, we can do like a... <laughs>
ago when I was just a boy in the Oklahoma hills. Didn't have a church in which to pray. Some people got together and we did one of our own. Shelter made of homes and a roof of pain. Well, it wasn't just a Baptist or the church of the Nazarene. People of all faiths came there to pray. And it didn't make a difference the color of the kind. And lots of folks would sing to the break of day. When they called in the sharp meeting, you could hear the people shouting miles away. Just praising the Lord and shouting victory. You can still hear them singing today. Well, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, unworking power in the blood of a man. There is power, power, unworking power in the precious blood. With heaven's harmony in my heart, there rings melody. There rings melody of love, and I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the Salvation, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. I think we used to get excited. I talked about that with our thing. You can pick on them old timers and them old churches. At least they had some life. Amen. And they get a little bit stirred up on if you need salvation. But when they came to this part, this is what you hear. Well, if you need the Holy Ghost. Tell him what you want. Whoa! Tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, just tell him what you want. Jesus so made mine. Call him up. It makes me 
happy, glad, and free. And I sing and shout it, for he's everything to me. And I was born again, and I was born in Dallas, Texas. I was raised in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and I was born again in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget that night in Nashville. Do you ever tell anybody? You know, people they can pick on, but, but there's such a joy in telling people. I never will forget the day, man, that Jesus came into my heart. Yeah. And it's renewed every day. It's just like living it over and over, just remembering, hey, if no one else on earth loved or cared anything about us, but God, God loves us, you know? Amen. And, and I, was, I was playing in a bar called the Demon's Den. <laughs> nice little friendly joint. Oh, yeah. The night I got <coughs> saved. And we'll close with this song. But I, I, I walked out in front of the Demon's Den on the corner of 4th Street and Broadway. And a 15-year-old young man of God walked up to me and said, Sir, you need Jesus. You've already heard it over and over and over again if you've heard me. Grandma Murray was almost 80 years old. She was with the same team. First time I saw her, she's almost 80. She's from Paducah, Kentucky. Was one of those old, bold, <coughs> crazy grandmas. Full of the Holy Ghost. Not afraid of nothing. Charged hell with a dry water pistol. Slapped the spit out of the devil's jaw and jerked somebody out of hell. Man, I mean, she's a bold. And I had too much pride to walk up to her, but the first time I saw her, she was witnessing to the prostitutes. And she had a cane, and her knees were, were weak, and she'd grab people with her cane. We called her the original hooker. <laughs> we didn't have a lot going for us. But you know, I walked close enough because I really wanted to talk to her. I was 23. And she grabbed me with her cane. She chewed me out. She said, Come here, boy. She said, you don't belong out here. God's got a plan for you. <laughs> I don't know what is in that jerk, but there's power. <laughs> and, uh, and she sat there and just the love just poured out. The love of granny. The love of God. And I got a glimpse of grace that night. And I wrote this, this song not long after. It's called Fourth Street Broadway. But you know, we're the light. We're the light. Brad Aitley, 15 years old, walked up to me. Grandma Murray, almost 80. And then the rest of that team. One of the people that was on that team, August 1981, came to our house last week and spent a few days with us. Close friends. Dear friends. You know? And after all these years. And uh, tell somebody. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. No, you're not. But sometimes we're a little intimidated. I felt that on the Staten Island Ferry one night, my first night in New York City, 1988, the year of the rapture. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. You don't understand that talk to yeah. Pastor yeah. 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 I missed it. <laughs> but I walked out on the Staten Island Ferry and I felt so awkward. I mean, when you're six foot six and, you know, a little over 200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 85 pounds. <laughs> you can really feel out of place, you know, and I, I was frustrated, I'm a little upset with God, but you know, you don't get too mad at somebody that can squash you like a bug if you wanted to, you don't want to, baby. But I just, I said, God, okay, I get it. I see the need, I see the hurt people. But what can I do? I see it. We walk out here every day and see people that they only knew God. And I said, God, what do you want me to do? What can I do here? And I just heard the Lord said, you can be you, uh, you can be you for me. That's all I want you to do. Amen. I thought, what would me do if I was me? We tried to be so many things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so I thought, and I ran down the bus and I got my guitar and I came up on deck. And as loud as I could, I said, I want to thank you folks for coming out to see me tonight. <laughs> and I acted like they all bought tickets on the showboat and rest. I started singing. Man, I felt so stupid. I felt so awkward. I always wish I could say something different. That man, I had the greatest time. Da, da, da. Well, it, it ended up that way, but at first it felt so awkward. And I was thinking, oh man, how stupid can you be to get up here? And people were just staring at me. 
And I looked up at the Statue of Liberty as I, as one went by, and they looked like the statue was looking at me going, stew. <laughs> <laughs> you can start imagining what people are thinking about you. And, but after about the third or fourth song, I felt, what you were talking about, I felt the sweet presence of God, the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit all over me, like, like I said earlier, like hot oil. And, you know, it's not all in a fee feeling, it's in a knowing. But thank God for the feelings. I love to feel the presence of God because what happened then was I didn't care if everybody thought I was stupid. I didn't care what anybody thought I had a, an audience with the king. Just remember that. You know, we sing it, and he walks with me, and he talks with me. His name's not Andy either. <coughs> Andy walks with me. But we need to be able to sing, and I walk with him, and I talk with him, and I tell him. He is my own. And, and so, when, when I felt that, uh, you know, did God just show up? The old timers described it the way it feels. I remember the old preachers, because I grew up around old preachers. And they were sincere, but they'd say things like, Oh, the Spirit of God came down. Well, that's what it feels like. But that's not really what happens. I mean, you know, he was already there. Amen. Guess who showed up? You did. Yeah. <laughs> My time here has been well spent. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know, I did. I pressed past the veil of the flesh, all those thoughts of awkward and stupid and all those things. And I pressed into that place where he already was, right there with me. And then it didn't matter what he was thought, and I just kept singing. And I opened my eyes, and people came up and surrounded me on that old boat. And one old businessman had tears streaming out of his eyes, told me how many years he'd been riding across on that ferry and sitting in an office all day and then riding back home. And it nearly knocked me over. He, he was crying. He said, son, he said, I had to come up here and tell you this is the brightest spot in my life as far back as I can remember. And later, it was just a few minutes I was alone, I stepped over by and I said, God, I was watching because we had a team and everybody moved in and people were giving their heart to the Lord and all kinds of things happening. And I said, God, how could I be that bright spot in someone's life? And he said, don't you remember? I said, you're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen? And so we're all different. We have different gifts. But there's always a way when God puts us. Now, I used to think God wanted me to just go out and tell everybody. And I'd try that. Man, I'm talking about frustrating. But here's the thing that we do. Is we have divine appointments every day. We have, we have that one moment and one opportunity. And I, I, I don't know, I won't get into stories because, you know, time is important. But remember this on time that Webster says time is an interval separating two points, the beginning and the end. And so we all have that time. If you live to be 20, if you live to be 1,000, I mean, you got time. That's all we have. It's the most precious thing we have. And God sits outside of time. He's not restrained by time strained or nothing but time. When Jesus was on earth, he was, he was under the element of time. And he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And that's what work does too. There's a night coming when we can't work, we won't be able to shine and be that light. The angel of the Lord in Revelation 10 stood with one foot on the land, one foot on the sea. And, and it's an amazing thing to find in the King James Bible. The angel, angel of the Lord said, I swear to God. Those are words I wouldn't say. I mean, I, I, that always bothered me. But the angel of the Lord stood one foot on the ground, one foot on the sea, and said, I swear by him that sits in the heavens, that created all things. Who is that? God. Time will be no more. We can't imagine we would get here by a certain time, so we could leave by a certain time. <laughs> So we could get home, so we could eat dinner, so we could do this, that with our family, and got to go to work, got to be at work tomorrow on time, and all these things. We're under that element of time. But you know, the devil in Revelation 12, the Word of God says, uh, the devil has come down against the inhabitants of the earth. Who is that? That's you and me. The devil has come down with great wrath against the inhabitants of the earth. 
He don't care if, if it's a horse kicking you in the head, whatever he can use to destroy. He's an equal opportunity to destroy. They want to convince you that God doesn't love you, that you've lost your salvation, all that stuff. He's come down with great wrath against the inhabitants of the earth. Why? Because he knows that he has but a short time. I want to tell you, the devil knows he's got just a short time. And so it's not a condemning word. It's not a driving to try to drive people to do something. God loves us so much, he just wants to, uh, to remind us that. Hebrews uh, 10 and 37 says, Yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. So this time, did you know that Hebrews 10 and 35 says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, wherewith you have great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And we've, we've taught that, we've used that for receiving the promises of God, and we can use it for finances, for help, for all. But you need to read it, Hebrews 10. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about the coming of the Lord. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Don't cast away your confidence. He's coming. If I had the Lord tell me, say, don't worry, son, I didn't leave you uh, and just drop you off. I was dropped off at uh, welfare offices. I was dropped off when I was a kid in places. But God said, I will never drop you off. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm right here with you. Whatever's going on, I was with you in that solitary confinement. And I was with you in all these places. I'm not going to leave you. I'm right here with you. And he said, besides that, I'm leaving for a little while, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, will come and teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've spoken unto you. And right in the middle of the devil roaring and, and screaming, making all the noise he could make. That still, small voice will come through and say, remember what I said? That I've got a plan for you. And it's for good. It's not for you. To bring you to a place of success. But no, regardless of whatever in life, we have this space called time, this interval between two points. And it's what we're going to do with it. Now, last, last word, my 128 point message. Jesus is coming back. Amen. 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 Question. Is that a threat? Or is that a promise? promise? See, I heard that. I heard that talk as a threat. Jesus is coming back. There was a song, a big hit called "God's Going to Get You for That." They sang it in church. God's going to get you for that. God's going to get you for that. There ain't no need to run in and hide. He knows where you're at. I hear that and I'm tremble. <clears throat> and then preachers preach, Jesus is coming back. You know? Better be ready, man. We get saved 12 times a day. You know? I mean, I got saved, saved, saved. You know? Still wasn't saved. You got to put your faith in God's grace. Let me say it one more time. It's too simple. You got to put your faith in His grace, not in your works, not in your goodness, His goodness. You got to put your faith in Him. In His blood. What could wash away my sins? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. There's power in that blood. Yeah. And so this space that we have is not to just be driven to do something else. <coughs> it's to enjoy the journey. It's a shock when you when you start getting to know God. That he's nothing like he was described by some of his <coughs> representatives. And in enjoying, I told the pastor, he was all stressed. We sit up out in his parking lot in St. Charles, Missouri. I love him. Dear friend of this day. But we brought a great big semi-stage trailer. We had everything you could imagine and had planned. And I actually, I had talked him into doing this outreach because they were just kind of waiting in the church, hoping some old sinner would come by someday. And we'll get him. <laughs> you know, old greeters be waiting at the door to come on in. This won't take long. <laughs> you know? So I talked him into this great big outreach, and they had, had jugglers, man. We had jumping Jupiters. <coughs> I brought my fire truck, an old 50-some model fire truck. The fire department brought their brand new one. No one would look at theirs. They were all, all over, and even the firemen were over there looking at our old fire truck. Man, we, you know, we ought to spend some money. That's what I love about this church. This, this church is spending money. What good is it? If you don't spend, I have a gift of spending money. <laughs> don't know how to do it. That's a gift. I can spend it. Give me, give me ten million dollars today. Watch. Oh, yeah. you know? I believe that's a word. <laughs> Somebody here today. Did you feel that? That was me. 
<laughs> Amen. Let's spend some money. Buy a fire truck. You'd be surprised what a crowd you can draw with a fire truck. You know? I can't begin to tell you the crazy things I've done. And then see people get saved. Because everybody around me saying, you're stupid, man, you're crazy. What are you doing? That's foolish. That's, you know, spending every dime I have to build an old semi-tractor trailer. And, and I had a truck driver. So what are you going to do with that big old reefer rig? I said, I'm going to cut a hole in the side of it. And I'm going to build a stage. And I'm going to pull up to Walmart parking lots. I'm going to pull up to Indian reservations. And, and anywhere I could go. And I ended up, we, we'd fold that thing up. We'd park on the curb and fold it out in parks. You know, and just, just crank it up. Never had a problem. Never got run off from anywhere. You know, just did it. Walmart started inviting us after we did a few. We just pulled up and out in the parking lot, folded this great big, enormous uh, 40 some foot stage, 48 foot stage, and just started cranking up the music. Hey, listen, we can touch this world. You're the light of the world. The city said on a hill can it not be hid. Let your light so shine. Well, I don't, I don't do that. I don't play instruments. So I, no, but we're the light. That's just what's in your hand. You know, God made it so simple with Moses. He said, what's in your hand? He said, a stick. A rod. And what God tell him to do? Throw it down. You know, I, I, threw, I, I sold my guitar. I didn't play for three years. I, I was sick of where it took me. <clears throat> but at the close of that three years, the first musical thing I did, God had me buy a guitar on my way to New York City. My first night in New York City was that Staten Island Ferry story. And I've been playing ever since. It didn't matter. The game was over. The joy had begun of doing something for God that didn't matter what anybody else thought or, you know. And uh, let me tell you something you can do. <clears throat> There's pickers everywhere. I'll say this for musicians that love God. Um, how do I say it? We need to have more front porch pickings and backyard barbecues where the topic of the subject, Lord Jesus, is about you. An atmosphere where the love is clear, your spirit man can grow. Where you'll find God's love and friendship out on somebody's porch or patio or maybe a fireplace or you know you can feed some hot dogs and people come over and just talk about Jesus we did that in the 70's we need to get rid of the lethargic depressed darkness you know no joy we need to stir everything and so I told that pastor he got so stressed what if nothing happens because we're in a neighborhood what if the neighbors get mad and I said pastor Bob I said, why don't we just get out here and let people see us and enjoy what we say we have? <coughs> Amen. Why don't we get out here and not worry about reaching nobody? What, what if they just see us over here enjoying our Father yes. and rejoicing? And what if we just be the light? You know what? People came out in all those beautiful, fancy homes, this beautiful area. They started bringing their lawn chairs out in the backyard and barbecuing and sitting in their chairs facing us and listening to the music watching everything that we did and God touched that whole neighborhood just Amen. one thing okay so that's all I got to say about that Amen, Amen. I, I don't even want to look at the clock <laughs> let, me, let me sing this little thing to you Nashville, Tennessee a light came and the light shone in the darkness and an old drug ridden alcoholic 23 year old boy that had given up not on God but on me living for God I knew I couldn't be good, so what's the use of wasting his time anymore? But Jesus passed by and saw me. A blind man in John chapter 9. A lot of people looked at him, but Jesus passed by and saw him. He didn't see a, a drug addict. He didn't see an alcoholic. He didn't see a messed up young man. You know what he saw? He saw a treasure hidden in the field. Yeah. And if we'll stop looking at people and start seeing people, and what if each one of us just turned and became that Greek word, parakletos, means come alongside to help. What well, if we just came alongside and invited someone to lunch, invited someone to a little uh, informal gathering at the house and, and had a few <coughs> people that are non-religious that just are lights. And you know, what if they met a pastor, 
uh, outside the church and realized, hey man, this guy's just down to earth. He's just, he's just a person that loves God. Amen. Anyway. about that anointing of being in the, in, in the instruments. And I got this word for you, Monty. There's healing. There's healing. There's a healing virtue that flows through those strings of anything you play. Amen. 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 I tell you what, I came in here this morning and my feet hurt. I got some old injuries, broken, broken bones on the top of my feet because I abused myself. You know, you know what I'm talking about? My my feet are pain free. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you what, that thing that just that that's just ministers to me. I want you to know something. This guy right here, David, he went to the hospital. My friends, uh, we, we had uh, nine thousand people over the world praying for Tim when he had a TBI, my friend. My son had a water shed, shed stroke, he'd been kicked in the head, and he had 20 brain confessions bareback right now. This guy came and that guitar and his voice is part of the healing. Amen. The body of Christ healed it. Yes, sir. But let me tell you what, that's what Tim remembers. Yeah. That's what he remembers. Yeah. So is it real? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's real. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. I, hope, I hope so. Now I just want to receive an offering for them. 100% of the offering goes to them. I know, you know. <coughs> but we're giving the money to them, and we just thank God for them. I pray over this offering today. 
I thank you, Father God, thank for these Jesus. men of God that would come and share with us what you've done in their life. And Father God, we receive it today. And Father God, we plant into this good ground that's taken the good news everywhere and touching heart. I want everybody to hear this. I want everybody to hear David's testimony. I want everybody to hear these stringed instruments. I want everybody, Father God, to receive these gifts and what you've given to us. We thank you for them. We bless this offering today. I pray you load them up, Father God, supernaturally load them up with, with, with the money they need to do what they're called to do. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, Brian, Oops, would you, uh, 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 as, we're, as we're leaving, are you wanting to pray over people, Dave? Yeah, we'll pray. Yeah, David and uh, Monty want to pray over people if you want that, you want prayer. But uh, right at the end here while we're receiving this offering this morning, make your check out to MHC, Mountain High Chapel, that's fine. We'll give them all one check. And then uh, Brian will pray the, the uh, what is it called? The preview. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, the preview. The forerunner. The forerunner. The forerunner, Brian. It's a forerunner. We'll play that out for this. There's some movie that's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Soon. 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 Coming soon. Yeah. Theaters near you almost say what they Hey, uh, that's okay. Bring the mics Uh, back up. Listen, I I just would like anybody that, first of all, that has has a, a need for healing in your body, uh, I tell you, God, God heals. He's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Malachi says, I am the Lord God. I change not. Uh, Peter uh, walked down the street. The Word of God says, if people gathered just at the shadow of Peter would, would touch them. And, and, you know, it doesn't say anybody was healed. Don't get mad at me. But I just noticed. But the thing is, their faith in that point of contact was, was his shadow. And, and I'm believing that God be said, the woman with the issue of blood said, if I just touch the hem of his garment. You know, all these things that, that man, but, but God just does it. And, and if we can believe that, I've seen thousands of warts fall off of people's hands, including, it started with my own and my daughter's. And God said, welcome, I want to welcome you, now I have a ward ministry. <laughs> because I thought I had a mountain removing ministry. <coughs> And he said, if you'll keep walking with me, I'll take you to tumor removing faith. I'll take you to, to uh, you know, cancer removing faith. He said, it's the same as the war, but you have to understand that. That it's nothing too great, nothing impossible to them that believe. And whosoever should say to this mountain, so there's words to speak and declare by the authority of Jesus Christ. But what I feel led to do is that everybody needs a healing in your body just to come up here right now. And corporately, we're just going to pray and we're going to speak whatever the Holy Spirit tells us to speak to and then receive whatever God says. And if it's if it's growths, if it's warts, if it's sickness, here, everybody say this. This is a prayer that, that Aiken, I'm sorry, that, um, not Aiken. Gosh, I can't think of his name. Uh, now, maybe it is the prayer of Aiken. Uh, he said it is nothing. Isn't that a great prayer? Yeah. Yeah. He, he said, oh, Lord, our God. Everybody say that. Oh, Lord, our God. Lord, it is nothing. Yeah. For you to save with many. Say that. Or with those that have no power. Now think about that. Do you ever feel powerless? If you're praying for something that's come against you, but then especially if you're praying for something that's come, come against someone you love, it is nothing for you, O oh God. Even though I may feel powerless, it is nothing for you to, to, to say with many or with those that have no power. Then he went on to pray, Help us, O oh Lord. Everybody say that. Help us, O oh Lord. For we rest on you. For we rest on you. Isn't that awesome? Now the prayer of Aiken, he said this. He said, In your name we go against this enemy, greatly outnumbered. In your name we go against this enemy. Let not this enemy prevail against you. Did you hear that? For the enemy to prevail against us, he'd have to prevail against God first, and we have to understand that. So he was talking about the Ethiopians. I love the next person says, and so God smote the Ethiopians. But for us, it's God in your name we come against this thing. 
Don't let this thing prevail against you. And God smote the thing. In your name we come against cancer. Let not cancer prevail against you, O oh God. And God smote the cancer. In your name we come against heart disease. Lord, don't let heart disease prevail against you. And he smote heart disease. In your name we come against diabetes. Lord, don't let diabetes conquer you. And God smote diabetes. And I can go on and on and on and on down the list. We can rub the fuzz off of our heads trying to get people to just because of the touch of somebody. And it is the touch of the master's hand. It's the touch of God. But I want to tell you, he sent his word and healed them. And them is us. Yes. So we're healed. Amen. And he said, I will heal all of your wounds and restore health unto you. Did you hear that? Yeah. Amen. I will heal your wounds and I will restore health. What's the verse? What's Jeremiah 30, 17. So you need to start building an arsenal of the word. You're ready for a big one to go in your arsenal? Ecclesiastes 9 and 4. Think about Paul in the middle of the storm in Acts 27 says all hope was then taken away. If you're in a hopeless situation, if you're facing something, finances, physical, relationship, whatever, all hope was then taken away. But Paul stood up and said be of good cheer. And so Ecclesiastes 9 and 4, everybody take a deep breath. Are you still here? Yeah. Okay. Ecclesiastes 9 and 4, to all those who are joined to the living, there is hope. Come on. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the banker says. I don't care what the report. To all them that are joined to the living, there is hope. He goes on to say, a live dog is better than a dead lion. I may just be a dog of a preacher, but I'm still barking. <laughs> Amen. I may just be a, a dog of a singer, but I'm still howling. And you know what? Smith Wigglesworth, Smith Wigglesworth was awesome, and he's still touching lives because of his life. But he can't do this. Yeah. Don't look like much, does it? But I'm still here is what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm still alive. I can declare the word of God. I can, I can declare a thing, and I can command uh, and by the authority of Jesus Christ that's what I'm going to do right now so if you want to stand where you are if you want to come up here uh, but Father I thank you just reach out and, and <coughs> let God just touch you right now Father Monty and I Pastor Ed, Mona and Christy and every other believer we agree together for these we know there is an attack against the body of Christ uh, trying to just afflict and bring sickness and disease diabetes, heart disease, cancer, all those things. But your word says, it is nothing. I want to say some words, and I want you to say, it is nothing. Cancer, it is nothing. heart disease, it is nothing. diverticulitis, it is nothing. brain injury, it is nothing. Uh, diabetes, it is nothing. arthritis, it is nothing. rheumatism, it is nothing. joint disease, it, it is nothing. Lord, it is nothing for you to save with many or with those that have no power. But, Father, we have power. The power that you've given us in the name of Jesus, we come against every sickness, every disease by your authority, by the authority of the Word of God, that you said, forget not all of God's benefits, who forgives all of your iniquities and heals all of your diseases. Yes. Lord, we thank you that we're healed. I ask you for healing. Because you told us to ask. Yes, we know that we're praying according to your perfect will. And that you hear us. And we know that you hear us so we know that we have the petitions that we ask of you. It is your perfect will to save us. Yes. It is your perfect will to heal us. Yes. It is the, your perfect will to provide uh, abundantly for us. Yes. It is your perfect will that we do well, that we prosper and be in hell, even as our soul prospers. So I speak to you sickness. I speak to you disease. I speak to every affliction. And I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ to go back into the pit where you came from. You have no place. You have no right in the child of God's life. You have no part of us. Go in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the healing power of God that flows from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet that we're healed, that you deliver us from all affliction, 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. In Jesus' name. Now, simple little imps and warts and colds and things go in the name of Jesus. Simple little things like cancer and heart disease and diabetes, sickness, brain injury, whatever. In Jesus' name, be broken off of the lives of the children of God in this house and in this place and throughout our family. Yes. Father, we thank you for victory. And Father, I thank you for a deeper understanding of <coughs> your love, that you love us. It's time for us to quit grubbing around on the inside of ourselves, whether you love us. You've already shown that. The evidence is too great. So now it's time to get on with being the light yes. and speak in love and speak in the love of God and, the, and be yes. the light that we're called to be to others. We thank you and give you all the glory for it. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We call for the provision. <coughs> some, some people have, have a need of provision in the hundreds and finances and, and material things to move forward with some things. Some need hundreds of thousands and some need millions. And uh, you only know and God knows. But he didn't make any stipulation on it. He said, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. Now the other side of that, he wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to be wise. He doesn't want uh, prosperity to destroy us. I, you always want a word from God. I had a word from God in 99 when I moved home from Canada after being up there four years building a church and working up there. And God said, son, I love you too much to bless you. I mean, you want a word from God. <laughs> he said, I love you too much to bless you the way you, you desire. And he said, the way I desire to bless you is so much greater than that. He said, but on the foundation that you have, it would only destroy you. And I said, God, I'll just cry. I said, God, let's just tear up the whole thing. I'll, I'll just go back. I'll go to school. I'll go sit in church and serve a pastor, whatever you want me to do. And Lord, very quickly, corrected. He said, no. He said, you have a good foundation, but there's weak areas. Hello. And he said, with those weeks, we've got to repair this foundation. There's things that, that you didn't understand that you understand them. And you know, just with a willing heart, say, God, let the foundation be strong. When I did that, everything began to change. And you know what? I'm experiencing the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. You know? Part of that blessing is pain. I didn't say I have everything I desire to have to work with. Because again, we have this element called time. And folks like me and Del Ray got things to do. <laughs> Did you say amen? amen? We got things to do. And we know that we've got time. But we don't have a lot of time. And so we want, we want to get understanding so we can have the provision to do what God's called us to do. And I'll say this, it's not the correct word. Prosperity without purpose is destruction. A lot of people have prosperity in, in the area of finances and things and goods, but they don't have any purpose. It don't mean nothing. Just buy another boat, just buy another, uh, even though you have 12 flat screen TVs, just buy another yacht, buy another resort. Buy, you know, if you don't have purpose, then, then it's just foolishness. So Father, I, I thank you for the prosperity of God that comes upon your people, Father, that are believers from whatever level, from baby Christians all the way, and I've watched that in my life, Lord, how you have prospered me and how you have blessed and watched over. And and I, along with Ed Shirley and others that's part of the movie, uh, the Kings and, and different ones here, Father, we, we declare the movie's coming. Mm -hmm. It's going to be done. It's going to be done with excellence, and it's not going to be done on a shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. It's going to be done right. And Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for prosperity on your people. I pray for my brother Monty. Great prosperity is coming to you, yes. brother. Great, but you're going to have purpose like you've never had. Amen. It's going to be greater. You've known, but you're you're going to have great prosperity, uh, which means health, finances, relationships. But it's going to be with the purpose, <coughs> and, and I declare that over everybody here. Great prosperity. Great prosperity, great wealth, but with purpose, with purpose to know what it's for. And so, Father, we thank you. We receive that, and, and we just believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.